Hi everybody, welcome to another video tutorial from Studio 180 Design. My name is Deb Tucker and this lesson is going to revolve around the shaded nine patch. It's a technique sheet that's designed to work in conjunction with our Tucker Trimmer, either the Tucker Trimmer 1 or the Tucker Trimmer 3. The shaded nine patch is a block that was traditionally made from individual pieces, individual squares and individual triangles. But one of our brilliant certified instructors, Beth Sidley, figured out a way that we could do this with strip piecing. And we could do and create this unit slightly bigger than it needs to be, that will allow us to trim it down and clean it up so that what we create are units that are perfectly sized and they're going to give us better looking quilts at the end. The technique sheet, when you look at it, has all the information that you need. It has a chart with different sizes, but it also has a diagram of the shaded nine patch block itself. If it's important that you place your colors in a specific order, the diagram will tell you which strips you cut, where they will be placed in the particular unit. My suggestion is when you're learning this, just make it scrappy and it'll be a whole lot easier. And then you can play with colors later on when you want to do this. So you can see there are five different numbers there. We're going to be cutting a strip for each one of those numbers. Let's get started. Your first step will be to look at the chart and figure out the size unit you want to end up making. I want to end up making one of the smaller units. It's going to finish to four and a half inches. And what I'm going to do is to begin to cut the strips according to the chart. The strips that you cut are going to be different. They, they should be all be about the same length, but they're going to be different sizes. Strip one, one in the corner, strip two, and strip three, are three different size strips. They'll eventually be sewn together into strip set number one. Strips that will fall in the middle are strip sets that are going to be made with number four, number five, and another number four to create a different looking strip set. You'll stitch them together to create a set. One, two, three, and four, five, four. Once they're sewn, you're going to press them. Follow the pressing. On strip set one, all of your seams will be pressed going toward the larger strip. That's actually strip number three on there. When you are pressing strip number four, press those seams away from the widest strip. So strip set one, towards the largest strip set two, away from the largest strip set. And then we're going to work on subcutting these. And this is where you really need to pay attention because what you subcut from strip set one is going to be different than what you subcut from number two. So we're going to work with these one at a time. We're going to take strip sets one that has position one, two, and three strips. What we're going to do is subcut those the same size as the position one strip. For my size, this was cut two and a quarter inches, so my subcuts are two and a quarter inches. Then I'm gonna cut up all my pieces so that they look like this. When I work with strip set two, what's going to happen is my subcuts that I make across that strip set are going to be the same size as the strip number two that's listed on the chart. If you look at it for the four and a half inch unit that we're making, that's a two inch increment. So what you'll find is the subcuts that you make from strip one are one size, these are a different size. Pay attention here. That's the first time I did this, this is where I made my mistake. So pay attention here, do your subcuts. You'll find that you're gonna need more of the strip set one than you do of the strip set two. Because once you've got your segments, what I do is take the ones from my Strip set one, separate them, and rotate that. Again, I separated them, rotate it, and then I only need one of these. So in the big scheme of things, if you're making a big project, you're going to need to piece more of strip set one than you do of strip set two. You're going to then take these units, sew them together into a rectangle. There's not a lot of matching that needs to happen. You'll only be matching seams at this intersection right here and this intersection right here. So it's pretty simple to do. Use your best quarter of an inch. When you do that, you're going to see 
nesting seams here and here when I did my stitching along here. Now what happens once you stitch this, you're going to head to the ironing board to give it a press. The seams really want to go a lot of different directions. So what we recommend is that you find the place that is in between the seams that aren't nesting. This is a nesting seam. This is a nesting seam. I'm going to look at the section where the seams aren't nesting and I'm going to take a pair of scissors and halfway in between those two seams I'm going to put a snip into the seam allowance. I'm going to put one snip there. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Find the halfway point in between. Doesn't have to be perfect. And make a snip in there. And what that's going to allow me to do when I go to press is let this seam fall the way it wants to and let this seam fall the way it wants to. Let me pull out one that has been pressed and you're going to see how nice and flat they lay. Once you've done the pressing, the next step in the instructions will be to put two marked lines on your rectangle. Now those marked lines are actually at a 45 degree angle. So you're going to have to make sure you have a ruler that has 45 degree lines on it. And the important thing that you need to do is between this intersection and this intersection is draw a line at a 45 degree angle that's going to cut through those two intersections. So you can take a ruler, line up a 45 degree line with one of the edges of your rectangle, make a mark here, slide it down, and simply make another mark this way, but make sure those marks are going directly through those intersections and they're actually going to be cutting the small rectangle shape that's inside your big rectangle shape. So once you have your piece rectangle pressed and marked, you're going to team it up right sides together with an unpieced rectangle. The size of this is also on the chart, so you'll just consult that. And you're going to line that up face to face, right sides together, and you're actually going to go ahead and stitch on those two lines. Now I'm going to warn you about something that will probably happen somewhere in your construction of the, of the nine patches. If you follow the directions the way they're printed on the technique sheet, you're going to have this look with the diagonal marked lines going in this direction. But if you end up having those three larger bricks in the opposite direction, you're never going to be able to mark the diagonals going this way. This happens because you just sewed in a little bit different order. First of all, don't panic. Okay. Second of all, don't throw everything away. Just realize you can mark those same diagonals going in the opposite direction, follow through, and still end up with shaded nine patches. Your positioning, if you're doing fussy coloring, is going to be different. But if you're doing something scrappy, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So if this happens, don't panic. Think, oh no, and then follow the directions the rest of the time. But you're going to layer the two, piece rectangle with the unpiece rectangle, stitch on the diagonals. Once you stitch on the diagonals, you're going to then cut them apart. But you can start to see what's going to happen. When I cut them apart, I'm going to have one of the shaded nine patches right here and one of the shaded nine patches right here. Now when I cut them apart, I usually flip it over so that I'm just looking at the blank rectangle. Use a regular ruler. Put your quarter of an inch line there and do your cutting. And you're going to see that you have very little waste that happens when you cut those two shapes apart. And when you're done, you'll end up with a unit that is a shaded nine patch that is a little too big. And that's where that tucker trimmer tool comes into play. That tucker trimmer tool is what I'm going to use to trim this down. Now, if you remember, Back at the beginning, I think I mentioned that the size I'm making is a four and a half inch finished unit. That means when all the sewing is done, this will be measure four and a half inches. That means I need to trim this to five inches. I will use my tucker trimmer tool, and what I'm going to locate are a couple of the guidelines. First line I'm going to locate is the five inch line. That's the line that's going to go on the long diagonal. The second line I'm going to locate is that common diagonal. That's what's going to go right through that seam intersection right there. Now this is set up for right handed trimming. I would set it up here so that I can align those two things. I can align this line and I can align this line with the intersection and this with the seam and trim right handed. 
Now, those of you who know Studio 180, you know that we always attend those left-handed trimmers as well. Left-handed, you simply rotate your block and your tool, look at the same lines, the five inch diagonal on the seam, the common on that same seam intersection, so that when you trim as a left-hander, you are going to be able to come up the left and across the top and make a comfortable trim. But what's gonna happen when I do this is the same as what happens with all of our tools. By making them oversized, I'm gonna get rid of any sewing or, or stitching or pressing issues. Trim up the right, trim across the top, creating a clean square corner, lift the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees, place the tool back with the five inch diagonal here, the cleanup line here, I'm looking at the common diagonal, making sure that it lines up with the seam intersection that I matched. I'm gonna have a perfect size block, all the seams are going to be properly placed. All of the edges of my block are on the straight of the grain. I'm going to have just a couple of threads that go into my trash can. You can take this and create all kinds of different designs. The back of the technique sheet gives you a couple of different design possibilities, but there's so many more. You can take this and, and treat it like a, a half square triangle and create endless possibilities with that shaded dye patch. So. Head to your local quilt shop, pick up a copy of our shaded nine patch technique sheet, get a tucker trimmer if you don't have one, and you'll use that a lot. Um, and of course, if your quilt shop doesn't have it, you can come visit us at our website and we can get them in your hands that way. But start playing with these. You're going to find that they're pretty addicting. And when you create your projects, send us some photos. We love to see what you guys do with all of our tools and our processes. Good luck with all you do. Have fun. Bye.